Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 116th scale radio controlled M26 A1 Pershing tank. The model that you see here is built for a private commission and belongs to a private collector. As like I mentioned in all my other commission build videos, I often take on commission build projects from vehicles ranging from 135th scale all the way up to 1 6 scale. As for availability and pricing information, that information can be best by contacting me through the eastcoastarmory.com website with the email address info at eastcoastarmory.com. The model itself started off as a Tamiya 116 scale radio controlled T26 E3 or M26 Pershing. The model, as you can see from these snapshots, arrived in a pre-built state. The model itself was assembled by another model maker and the model itself was built primarily out of the box. Although the model did feature some aftermarket components, namely that of the aftermarket metal tracks that we see here. The previous builder did a decent job with building the model. He also did a very good job with the model's machinery and the model runs as per the way the kit is intended. The client requested to have the model transformed from an M26 or late World War II era T26E3 into that of a Korean War era US Marine Corps M26A1. We'll be going over these additions that were made to the Tamiya kit to transform it to the M26A1 in this video. In addition to modifying the tank into an M26A1, a lot of these features have been reproduced as molds and are available on as detail upgrade parts on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. We'll be also going over that in this video as well. First, a quick walk around the model. Starting with the model's running gear, the model features the stock Tamiya functional torsion bar suspension. The suspension itself was built by the previous builder and was, proper, was properly assembled. The only addition that the previous builder added to this vehicle was the addition of the aftermarket track. The, as we all know, the stock Tamiya kit comes with the steel chevron style track links as that are made in plastic and on the aftermarket scene there are these workable die cast versions which represent that of the double rubber chevron style track the links themselves are nicely done in that they're they have good detailing to them and also add a little bit of weight the added weight helps with the sag of the track as well as it also gives the model a little bit more realistic movement and with the added weight the model does perform better while running off-road one thing to watch out for with these metal tracks, which are patterned after rubber links, is that if you're running the model on a hard surface, the paint will wear off on the chevrons and bare metal will be exposed. Since the track is made out of rubber on the real tank, the bare metal can lead to a continuity error, which can hurt the look of the vehicle. Because of this, I always recommend running tanks with this type of metal track on hard surfaces at a minimum. Starting with the front plate, we'll go and start going into the M26A1 conversion. The most notable difference between the M26 T26E3 and the M26A1 is that of the design of the front blower. On the earlier T26E3, the blower was a small rounded blister on the front glass's plate, 
while on the M26A1, the rounded blower was replaced with that of a squared off design. This squared off blower here was modified from the kit original rounded one and was sculpted in the shape you see here with that of epoxy. To get an idea on how much different the front bow is, I have here next to this model that of a stock Tamiya T26 E3. If I zoom into the rounded blister, you will see the shape change compared to that of the M26A1's squared off appearance. In addition to this squared off front blower, another feature that distinguishes this vehicle from that of the earlier T26 E3 is that of the deleted backup periscopes. On the first 20 or so T26 E3 Pershings, on this section here of the hull are two backup periscopes that are found in this location here. The purpose of the backup periscopes is in case if the main periscope gets knocked out or goes offline, you have two spare periscopes to help you out. This feature was deemed to be too redundant and so was dropped on the production version of the M26 Pershing. Not to be confused with the T26 E3. This feature then carried on into the M26A1, which is what we have here. Just like with the blower, compared that with that of the stock Tamiya T26E3, you'll see the difference with the extra two periscopes compared to the deleted versions. What makes this model M26A1 compared to the standard M26 Pershing is that of the fender mounted turnbuckles. The turnbuckles are found on the both the front and rear portion of the fender work. These turnbuckles are a feature that is missing on the T26 E3 Pershing. The purpose of the turnbuckles is that shortly after the T26 entered service, complaints came in from the field that the because of the size of the fender work and because of their location, they were deemed to be very fragile and were not as strong as they should have been. A quick retrofit design was that of the turnbuckle. Turnbuckle added, once added, gave some more strength to the, both the front and rear portion of the sheet metal work. These turnbuckles are a common feature on M26A1s and carried over into the M46 as well as M47 patents. The turnbuckles themselves on the front of the vehicle affixed to the two lift hooks that are found on the bow portion and they are fixed via a small little plate which would have been welded to the lift hook to which the turnbuckle would then simply mount to. The turnbuckles that you see on this model are scratch built out of metal and are all soldered together. The purpose of soldering them all together is that it gives the turnbuckle, which is a very fragile piece, a little bit more strength and robustness which will help since that this vehicle is radio controlled. Moving our way to the back portion of the vehicle, we have some more M26A1 type modifications. Starting with the braces that we have here on the final drives. Another issue that was reported when the T26 E3 entered service was that of the final drive. Because on the Pershing the final drive descends so much from the lower hull, it was reported that after a period of use the final drive would eventually break off from the lower hull because of the limited points where the final drive is affixed to the hull. To remedy the situation, a reinforcement brace was designed in which the brace would be welded to the lower hull and then would bolt to the final drive. After this brace was developed, the final drive issues were a thing of the past. These final drive braces that we see here are a detail feature which is found on the M26 as well as the M26A1 Pershing. The braces that you see here are actually a new addition to the East Coast Armory 116 scale product line and come in a set of two. The pieces simply install to the lower hull and greatly improve the look of the lower hull detailing. Moving up from the lower plate, we'll start here with the two turnbuckles. As well as mentioned before, turnbuckles were also added to the rear and serve the same function that they give the rear fender a little bit more rigidity. The turnbuckles themselves are the same design, only the difference is that instead of being welded to the, the tow hook like they are 
on the front portion of the vehicle. They are welded to a steel plate, which would then be welded to the tank's hull. These turnbuckles here are made in the exact same way as the ones in the front, that being that of soldered metal. The next difference that is most notable of the M26A1 concerns that of the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold on the T26E3 also contained that of the travel lock, which would hinge downward when not in use. Shortly after the T26E3 entered service again, complaints followed that the casting of the exhaust manifold because of the heat would become weak and the travel lock hinging mechanism would crack under stress. The manifold was redesigned in that the manifold would have its travel lock affixed separately to the hull that still hinged downward. That exhaust still had two little nubs that were integrally casted into the exhaust manifold as it's a carryover from the T26E3. When the M26 received its A1 specifications, the exhaust layout was changed once again to the layout that you see here. If we notice, the exhaust does not have the blisters anymore, and the hinged travel lock was completely replaced with a travel lock that was mounted to the top deck over the radiator armored covers. The travel lock itself still featured the same design. It still had the same top hinge part, and still hinged open in the same manner, only the bottom portion was out of a new casting as well as a hinge mechanism. In addition to the hinge mechanism that's found on the travel lock, the exhaust manifold also had a hinging feature. Located on the bottom portion of the exhaust manifold is a small little integrally casted hinge. This is a carryover from the T26E3 in that due to get access to the exhaust system, you would remove the mounting bolts and the whole exhaust would hinge downward. This feature was also found on the M26 with the externally mounted swivel travel lock. However, on the M26A1, that hinging feature was deleted. However, even though the hinging feature was deleted, the small little hinge nub was still present on the casting. The M26A1 exhaust manifold and top mounted travel lock are also a new addition to the East Coast Armory.com product line. The two pieces are offered in a set together and the set comes with both the exhaust manifold as well as the top mounted travel lock. The set's travel lock comes with the bottom portion here as well as the hinge and the small metal handle. The kit is designed to utilize the top hinge portion as well as the hinging blocks of the Tamiya kit original. Because it utilizes the same components as the Tamiya kit, the piece is just as functional when assembled as the Tamiya kit original one is. It hinges open and as well as it also retracts in the closed state. For a quick comparison, here goes the M26A1 converted tank with the separate travel lock and exhaust manifold and bottom final drive braces compared to the stock Tamiya T26E3 vehicle without any final drive braces and with the original style travel lock exhaust manifold system. Moving our way to the model's grab handles. This model features aftermarket metal grab handles from Shumo Kits. The grab handles themselves are a nice easy addition that really help the look of the bins over the molded in ones which are found on the original kit. Shumo additions are also nice and handy in case you're doing a hen long rebuild or even if you are working with a pre-built second hand Tamiya Pershing in which the original separate grab handles that were supplied with the kit are no longer present. Moving our way to the front, the model features a replacement fire extinguisher box the kit original fire extinguisher box was missing when I received the model, so a new one was fabricated. In addition to fabricating the new fire extinguisher box, I also added the fire extinguisher handle and painted it red, which is typical for American tanks. In addition to fabricating the fire extinguisher box, I also fabricated the metal brush guards, which are found on the two bow hatches, as well as the top hatch. There are aftermarket ones available by Shumo, however the ones that you see on this vehicle are all scratch built on a metal wire. 
like on the Tamiya Kit original, the hatches are designed to be fully functional and do have their internal detailing. The internal detailing was all painted, like you see here. Just like with the standard Tamiya, under the driver's hatch is your power switch. However, I modified the vehicle in that under the assistant driver's hatch is the actual recharge jack in which you can recharge the battery of the tank without having to open up the turret or get into the hull. To get to the recharge jack, I simply open up the hatch and with a tweezer or a plier, I pull out the recharge jack from its location. I pull it out and from here, I can connect the battery to the model's recharger and recharge the, cha recharge the tank without having to open it up. After the model is done recharging, I go ahead and stuff the wires back into the vehicle. And then close the hatch and the model is now ready to run. If anyone's interested in the recharge jack system, contact me at the East Coast Armory email address and I could give you a price quote on fabricating one for a Pershing as well as any of the other Tamiya 116 scale tanks. Moving our way to the turret, this side here of the vehicle is pretty much stock Tamiya and didn't really need any modifications. The modifications also were the same on the rear portion of the turret. It's only on the driver's side of the turret in which the vehicle starts having some more M26A1 specifications added to it. One feature in particular which distinguishes this tank from the earlier T26E3 is that of the removal of the engine crane mount. Like I mentioned in my other Pershing videos, the T26E3 originally had two little mounts that came out of these two locations over here. The purposes of these little mounts was that when the engine when the tarp would be turned parallel to the engine you could hook up a hoist mechanism which can help elevate the engine out of the engine bay. This feature was decided that it was needed and was dropped on the M26A1. However, even though the piece was dropped, the small little locations for the crane mechanism were still found integral into the turret casting. Only thing that would be remaining would be the two little slabs like we see here. Also, if we notice, this vehicle is equipped with a tarpaulin rack system that is affixed to the turret and that of the mantlet. The tarpaulin was really a feature that was more heavily found on M26 as well as M26A1 Pershings. The tarpaulin racks that you see here are fabricated out of wire. The top portion of the vehicle is basically stock Tamiya. The copula as well as loader hatch have their interior details painted. However, some pieces were missing when I received the model, namely that of the vein sight, as well as the small little handle for the searchlight. The vein sight, a new one was fabricated out of plastic and metal. And as for the searchlight handle, I instead of fabricating a new handle for the searchlight, I went ahead and fabricated the cover cap, which would have been placed over the searchlight when not in use. Because of the searchlight's fragile nature, that was often stored inside the vehicle, and to prevent water from entering the vehicle, a small little cap would be positioned over the mounting for the searchlight. Moving our way to the rear portion of the turret, another modification was made. Since this tank was built out of the box Tamiya, you will know that Tamiya gives you a nice detailed MP48 spring antenna base. However, they want you to mount the model's aerial antenna for the radio over this location here. On the real tank, this location would be for an extra radio antenna base. Rather than trying to break into the turret to move the antenna to a different location, I went ahead and put over the stock to, the stock to me antenna, that of the eastcoastarmory.com MP48 spring antenna base. Like I mentioned in other videos, the antenna base is another addition on the eastcoastarmory.com 116 scale catalog. Moving our way to the model's M2HB heavy machine gun, the model features the standard kit of the M2HB. To me, M2 is a nicely detailed piece. However, on this model, the 
previous builder went ahead and permanently glued the mount to the M23 cradle to that of the turret. While working on it, I was able to separate the two, modify the gun so that it's still able to rotate on the pinnel mount like you see here. Another addition that had to have been modified was that of the carry handle for that of the barrel. This is a very fragile piece found on the Tamiya kit and it's not uncommon to have this piece broken off when you're working on a pre-built or a second-hand vehicle. The carry handle was fabricated out of wire and two small micro holes were drilled into the barrel in order to affix the new carrying handle. Unfortunately, the top cover was not able to be salvaged with its functionality, so it was permanently glued in the closed state that you see here. Moving our way to probably the last feature that distinguishes this vehicle as an M26A1 is that of the M3A1 90mm gun. The original T26E3 Pershing had the M3 90mm gun, which featured that of the double baffle muzzle brake. When the vehicles were upgraded to M26A1 specifications, the gun was replaced with the A1 version. What distinguishes the A1 from the standard M3 is that of the bore evacuator, as well as the single baffle muzzle brake as opposed to the double baffle muzzle brake. This bore evacuator and muzzle brake setup that you see here is another new addition to the East Coast Armory.com product line. The two pieces are sold in two different versions. You have just the muzzle brake alone. This is intended for those who have the M3A1 aluminum barrel which was sold on the aftermarket scene a few years ago. Or you can get it with the bore evacuator and modify the kit original aluminum barrel that you see here. The way to modify the kit original barrel is you measure out from the bore evacuator how much of the barrel you need to remove. And then with a tubing cutter you can go ahead and cut off the section of barrel that's no longer needed. Once the barrel section is removed you simply slide on the new barrel assembly and your gun is now that of the M3A1. Also, as of note, the, the Pershing M3A1 barrel actually received two types of gun muzzle brakes. This version here is the most earlier version, and then there was a later design. The first version was basically the double baffle casting that had the outer baffle machined away, and then the second pattern was that of a more refined and designed double baffle mu muzzle brake. Both muzzle brakes are correct for the Korean War time period that this vehicle represents. And as a final comparison, here we have the M26A1 turret with crane mounts removed. With the M3A1 90mm gun. Compared to the T26E3 turret with crane mounts fitted. And standard M3 90 millimeter gun with double baffle muzzle brake. Like what was previously mentioned, this model is fully radio controlled, and so we'll now go ahead and take it for a test drive. Like I mentioned earlier, the model was made radio controlled by the previous builder, and he simply just made the model with the out of box functions. To turn the model on, it's just like your regular Tamiya. And in which you first turn on the radio, then you turn on the tank.
that concludes this model showcase video for this 1 16th scale U.S. Marine Corps M26A1 Pershing. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for not just 1 16th scale detail components, but also 1 6th scale detail components and military vehicles. Thank you.